Hello. <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to talk about frontier molecular orbitals. Uh, the frontier molecular orbitals are defined as the highest occupied molecular orbital. That's the uh, molecular orbital uh, that's highest in energy and has electrons in it. Uh, and all, the other frontier molecular orbital is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So it's the lowest energy molecular orbital with no electrons in it. Being able to identify and know something about the frontier molecular orbitals has applications in uh, spectroscopy. Uh, electrons transitioning between the HOMO and the LUMO uh, are responsible for the energy differences observed when uh, conjugated molecules absorb ultraviolet or visible light. Um, and also to help understand the mechanism and, and behavior of uh, chemical reactions, where uh, organic chemists who specialize in this area can learn something about the, uh, the nucleophilic behavior of a molecule based on its HOMO and something about the electrophilic behavior of a molecule based on its LUMO. So here is a, um, an example of identifying HOMO and LUMO. So you have the pi molecular orbital diagram for 136 hexatriene uh, and the LUMO is that lowest energy molecular orbital that doesn't have electrons in it. So in that case, that's psi 4, which is an antibonding pi orbital. And I've got its uh, kind of the balloon animal drawing here. And then uh, the highest occupied molecular energy uh, molecular orbital is the highest energy orbital that has electrons in it. And that's psi 3. And I've got its uh, diagram here. <clears throat> uh, being able to, to know something about these orbitals will help understand paracyclic reactions in general, and that's a, a subject for another sequence of videos. Uh, but we can understand all manner of reactions. And so, for example, uh, the enolate ion, uh, which to the simplest of them is shown uh, above, is a ion in which you have an oxygen that's an anion attached to an alkene. And these things are nucleophiles, and you might expect them to be nucleophiles at the oxygen atom, but in fact, they're nucleophiles at the carbon atom. And if you look at the HOMO orbital for that enolate anion, the HOMO orbital has a large lobe at the carbon atom and a smaller one at the oxygen atom. Here's an example using the allocation. The allocation can react with nucleophiles, uh, and it reacts with nucleophiles at its LUMO, and so it can react with nucleophiles at either end of that chain. And the LUMO's orbitals has electron density at either end of the chain, but not in the middle. Frontier molecular orbitals can also be used to help understand UV visible absorption spectra. Uh, conjugated molecules absorb electromagnetic radiation in the ultraviolet and visible ranges. Those energy differences correspond to the difference in energy between the HOMO and the LUMO. Uh, so when this occurs, an electron is promoted from the HOMO to the LUMO. And so my uh, orbital diagram on the left represents the ground state of the molecule. Every electron is in its lowest energy possible orbital. After it absorbs uh, electromagnetic radiation it can go to the excited state on the right where one electron is now up into the orbital that used to be the LUMO. <clears throat> and so the energy difference between the HOMO and the LUMO can be used to, to help estimate what frequency or what wavelength of light is going to be used. Uh, so, you know, I have here 1,3-butadiene, one, uh, one, 1,3-6-hexatriene, one, 3 uh, 1357 octatetraene um, and their lambda max, so their wavelength of maximum absorption. Uh, and you can see that it increases with increasing conjugation. And remember that wavelength is inversely proportional to energy. So that means that the energy difference between those energy levels is decreasing. Um, and so it goes from 217 nanometers to 290 nanometers as you increase conjugation. And I have over here on the right side a, an, an equation that represents the relationship between the energy change, the energy, the energy levels n. So these are kind of like your quantum numbers for, for atomic spectra. Planck's constant h, the mass of the electron m, and l, the length of the conjugated system. And since l is in the denominator, 
the longer the system, the smaller the difference in energy, the smaller the difference in energy, the longer the wavelength in light. Now, there are other effects like solvent, like other uh, groups in the structure, conformation, um, that affect the, the UV visible absorption spectrum as well. But the main contributor is how many groups or how many conjugated bonds are there in the conjugated system. This concludes my video uh, on introduction to conjugated molecules uh, and molecular orbital theory. Thank you for watching.